Coley. Okay. Call the meeting of the City Council Finance Committee to order for Monday evening, December 17, 2018. Council Borgard, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to ask everyone for a moment of silence. We unfortunately lost um, Patricia Pat Foley um, last week, and she was a former chair of the Women's Commission and an extremely active individual in the city. And she dedicated a great deal of her life um, to individuals uh, that were victims of abuse, and particularly for um, the elder population of this community and other surroundings. So, thank you. Thank you. Nice our service to the city as, as well. Councilors, I, I just one uh, housekeeping issue. I think I gave everybody a copy of the auction report that, that occurred uh, last week when they had the auction. So just so everybody can see, anyone has any other further questions or whatever, you can check with the assessor's office or with uh, attorney Neza, Nezarella. And I understand it was very uh, successful. There was about 75, 80 people there, which was a good, um, it was a good turnout. So just so you can see what transpired uh, there. Our agenda this evening is is light, um, and just before we get into items one and two, councilors, I, I just want to uh, jump, if I could, just to three and four, so that that way there we, we won't have to sit and discuss that afterwards. So if anyone has any objections to that, seeing none, um, Madam Clerk, just read item number three for me, and then I'll talk about that in number four. Resolved to invite the executive director of the Brockton Retirement Board to inform the city council as to changes and policies established under her administration. Per President Arenary, this will be postponed until February or March Finance Committee meeting. Thank you. And I had a uh, conversation with uh, Jean from the uh, Retirement uh, Board in regards to uh, this resolve, uh, Council Borgard. I know you put this uh, forth. And in conversation uh, with her, first of all, it was a little bit late in timing because um, she works for the retirement board. Yes. And in order for her to even be here, the letter has to go to the retirement board and they have to give her the permission to okay. whether or not they want to so see, sure. you know, allow her to be here. I think that will happen, okay. you know, sometime probably January, February. Um, but at the same time, I believe the chairman of the retirement board also wants to be present okay. to talk a, as, as well for some changes that they are making. So. But she said she was not, definitely not prepared at this point in time. So that's why I put February, March, and, and um, I know Aaron will keep track of it. And uh, when, when the new president, whoever, gets in place, then uh, I'll make sure that um, that gets followed through. Madam Clerk, item number four. Resolve to invite the city solicitor or a representative Let from. Make a motion to postpone that number three. Go, go ahead. Make a motion to postpone as stated by the president. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to postpone. All in favor? Opposed? It's been postponed. Item number four. Uh, again, Madam Clerk, I'm sorry. No worries. Resolve <laughs> to invite the city solicitor or a representative from the law department to inform the city council and the public as to the new contract with Comcast or if the new contract has not been signed, information as to where we are, we as a community, stand on this issue. Information not returned from cable company to city solicitors. I talked to the solicitor's office and I talked to the, uh, the attorney uh, that was present there at, at that time and I talked to uh, attorney Nazarello as well. I, I believe the compa Comcast um, contract is in its process of being just completely finished and, and being signed, but there is a 30, 40 day window. So they still have it. They're still reviewing it, and as soon as it gets, re you know, finished reviewing from them, they will return it back to the city solicitor's office, and that at that point in time, um, it should be uh, uh, at that point, maybe sometime in January, when we can uh, again have uh, Attorney Nazarella, I think is who you requested to be here, and somebody from Comcast um, at that time to come in and, and whatever information they can get. But that's why that um, that's not, uh, you know, before us this evening. So again, postpone. Second, uh, excuse me, January. Second meeting in January. Motion been made and uh, seconded to postpone until the second uh, finance meeting in January. All in favor? Opposed? So be. Now we'll go to item number one, Madam Clerk. Ordered that the City Council authorizes the acceptance and expenditure of the total grant funds in the amount of 98465 from the Community IT Grant. The City of Brockton, in conjunction with the Brockton Public School District, intends on expanding the capacity 
of the Public Safety Network, which is a dedicated fiber network to deliver all things related to public safety. Funding will be used to assist in providing needed upgrades in 10G fiber connectivity and better performance and stability of switching networks. Invited, Karen Pival, Budget Director, Finance, Bill Santos, IT Director. Good evening, lady and gentlemen. How are you? Anything you want to say before uh, any questions, or you just want to just take some questions, is whatever you want to do? I can take questions. The description's pretty good. Okay. Council Razak? Um, this is a no match grant, correct? Yes. yes. Very good. Thank you. Council, Council Thank you. Cruz? What is the where does the community IT grant come from? Is it a state, state grant? State grant. Thank you. Move to recommend favor. Second. Second. Motion been made and seconded to recommend favorably back to the full council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Happy holidays. Yeah. Happy holidays. Item number two. Resolved to invite the Mass Development TDI Fellow to inform the city council as the results of the summer beer garden project known as Prova and any future plans for other such activity. Invited, George Durant, TDI Fellow, Mass Development. Good evening, George. How are you? Good, good. How are you, Council? Good, good, good. Congratulations on having a successful season for the project that you uh, had there this year. And I think it was uh, talked about quite a bit and everybody enjoyed it. So um, good job. Good job. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for your support. Yes, thank you. Questions, Council Borg, I do? Yes, I, I filed a resolve. Thank you for coming out this evening. And um, primarily wanted to find out if there were any profits made. And um, because myself, where that was in downtown, like the idea of beer gone, people being able to you know, have a drink, or if they don't want beer or wine, that they can have whatever, listen to me, some music, have a good time weather permitting and uh, it's always a variable and I'd like to see something like this happen from around Memorial Day to around Labor Day so you know definitely extending that and I was just curious a little bit about the cost because it seemed you know that they needed to raise some money and at the same time I am hoping that something like this transpires if it stays downtown to the proposed Sycamore Grove and if it needs to move that's fine too you know because there's, there's always room for some fun things to take place in Brockton. And I like the idea that it was free admission. So that's why I wanted to know some details and how people can get involved with next year if, in fact, there's an opportunity or if, in fact, we need to start working on grants or what have you. So thank you. Yeah, no, th thanks for having me and, and bringing me in, Council. Uh, I, I would say in regards to uh, the previous year, I, it was, I think, exceeded my expectations for what we could do. Uh, we're really trying to prove that there was a market in downtown Brockton for, uh, for food and entertainment in the evening, uh, and that folks could come together, have a good time, and, uh, and be safe doing it. Uh, that said, there were 24 occurrences of Prava, uh, which totaled about 120 hours of operation over the summer, uh, from July through September, and we had zero public safety incidents uh, on the site. Uh, on average, uh, we were pulling in, um, let me just check my notes here, since I haven't been uh, living and breathing it lately, uh, about 166 people a night on average. Uh, and there, were, there was an average of $1,750 of food and beverage sales each night. $1,750 of food and beverage sales each night. So that was, it was open for about five hours in the evening, uh, really four. Four hours if you want to see when it's really hot. Uh, but that gives us some real numbers now to go out to uh, restaurant investors, uh, breweries, and, and other types of entertainment and food and drink establishment, uh, you know, when, when we're starting to market to them and try to attract them to downtown Brockton. Uh, so rather than working off projections, um, we've, we now, I think, have, have pictures and data to point to that this, this would work. Okay, so now, right now, how, what will we do to be able to have another one? Yeah, so to do another one, um, we have most of, so Prava is, is working towards becoming a 501c3, 501c3 nonprofit organization. So it's own independent entity, uh, so they can operate with autonomy um, within the city. Uh, Emily Hall is actually the, uh, the chair of the board 
uh, and the president. So I, I, I guess in some ways I'm speaking on her, her behalf tonight. Uh, and she will be at the helm uh, moving forward. She put in a tremendous effort uh, over the summer to make this happen above and beyond, uh, I think, what, what anyone would ask for. Um, uh, but it's, it's an evolving process at this point. Uh, it will happen next year in, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, in terms of Sycamore Grove, um, the, the site is still up in the air, I think. Oh, yes. there, I realize. Yeah. There was, uh, I, I would say, a, a side mission of the project to activate a potential development site. Uh, and I, I think the, the board would like to try and do that again uh, and maybe eventually end up in Sycamore Grove. But, but it's still kind of examining uh, which, what the most appropriate site in downtown would be this year. Uh, I, I will say that uh, a lot was learned from, from this. None of us had done this before. Uh, and so there are a lot of expenses, um, you know, like preparing the, the, the floor and installing grass mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing that uh, you don't think, and the electricity that you don't think about. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we know. So that will go into consideration for next year. Uh, I, I would expect that probably in March, February, there will be some additional details coming out. Uh, and um, the the group will try and get a jump on recruiting restaurants uh, again this year um, before the project actually happens, uh, as well as entertainment uh, and, uh, and and arts and performers uh, that would attend the the, uh, the site. Uh, so learning from last year, I, I, admittedly we're scrambling almost every week, particularly with the food vendors, uh, until the end when it was starting to catch on. Now, how, how are people going to be able to find this out? Yeah, so we'll, we'll continue to use Facebook as a medium. Um, the page now has over 1,000 followers, uh, so that was growing rapidly um, throughout, throughout the season, which was fantastic to see. Uh, there is also uh, an email for folks to reach out to if they want to get more information about Prava or updates or are interested in being performers or vendors there. And that email is info at gmail.com. And the Prava does not have the exclamation point like most of the uh, branding does. Council Board Guard, you want to say? Oh, okay. Uh, no, thank you. I just so I just wanted you know this to be. So, did you make a profit? Uh, Prava did not. It was it was free for vendors uh, and free for the people. Uh, the the local businesses. Uh, were able to keep all the revenue that they made, and same thing with the performers. Okay, all right. So you're saying the local. In other words, if um, will, will Johnny's that? Burger came and they made money. Okay, exactly. Right. We didn't but charge Johnny's not, Burgers anything. But you didn't out. charge them a registration fee. Or something. Uh, no, no, okay. we kept it entirely free. Uh, what okay. we really wanted this year in year one was data. Um, okay. You know, so that we can we can use that and to attract. I just threw up that particular vendor. I mean, I'm yeah, familiar yeah, with others, course. but just of simply. Course. And um, how much were the entertainers paid, approximately? Just curious. Uh, I, I, it, it really varied on who it was. Uh, so you know, getting five hundred to two thousand. Getting or? the drifters was significantly more than you oh, know. Yes, I um, that, yeah. Getting a few local artists that that might have been paid, you know, two hundred, four hundred dollars. You know. Okay. So it really know, varied. That's, that's a, one of the reasons why I'm asking is because yeah. we want to give this opportunity to local artists. We have an enormous amount of talent in mm -hmm. this community, all kinds of talent, and that's why we want people to get a chance. And that's one of the reasons I believe in this idea. I just want to make sure that people get a chance to come in and maybe other people that might not have a standalone restaurant, for example, but might be caterers, might be interested in spinning off something for a night. And um, I mean, uh, the brewery, I know is in the next community over. They, they were wonderful. They did a great job. And that's, that's the type of one I'm looking for and, and getting it promoted so people realize it exists. To me, you know, I saw the idea was great. It reminded me of something you'd see in Florida or something where the climate <coughs> is nicer most of the year as opposed to where it's only part of the year. But just as a whole, where we've seen it work in Plymouth or what have you. And I want people to feel that something like this can take place. And yes, I would like it always to be downtown, naturally, because you want to enhance downtown. But uh, not if there's no location downtown and they choose to go to Camp Pella or Montella, we want to see that people get that opportunity and get you know, the support it needs. And can people become part of this group if they so choose uh, to get more involved with getting entertainers or getting um, vendors or what have you, or just being decorators 
a lot of people get really into that. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think I think there will definitely be more opportunities for um, for uh, additional community members and volunteers to get involved. Um, at, at this point, it's kind of in the hands of the board uh, determining okay, what kind of resources. How many people are on the board right now? How many people are on the board? Um, let's see. I would say. It was about 13 before um, from seven organizations uh, that that I think is is calming down a little bit because some of them were location based uh, like NeighborWorks. It was on oh, their sure. site. Okay. Yes. Uh, and they won't necessarily be involved uh, this year. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. But so you're saying about 13. It, it's an evol it's an evolving process as oh, the I board realize, yeah. uh, incorporates as a 501c3. Okay. All right, thank you very much then. I'm just leaving it for others. Yes. <coughs> Future entertainment. We do have the former city council cords. <laughs> <laughs> Tim's got a new hair. Thank you for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Councilor Nicastro was next. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Duran. Thank you for being here this evening. And I did attend Prava on several Friday nights. Um, and it was something different in the downtown. A, a, a very good beginning. Um, I am interested to know. Would you consider this to be a public-private partnership? I think I understand mass development put money in, some charities put money in. Yes, absolutely. This, this is actually a, a public-private nonprofit partnership, okay. uh, and and that's not only from the operational level, but I, I think also from a a funding perspective. Uh, this was um, fueled by mass development's patronicity program, uh, which was the crowdfunding platform that was used. Uh, the community raised $84,500, and that was from 120 different donors uh, in order to access the $50,000 match from Mass Development. So it went above and beyond the 50 that was required uh, to, to make the project happen. Okay. Uh, and I, I would, if, if I'm so inclined, I'd uh, like to take a moment to thank some of our bigger donors again, which were uh, Eastern Bank, um, uh, we had Metro South Chamber of Commerce, Harbor One Bank, Trinity Financial, EOMS Recycling, and Massasoit Community College. Those are the largest donors that we had. That's great. Yeah. So um, as a result, I'm interested in your reporting. I'd love to see your profit and loss. Yeah, uh, we're, we're still compiling the data, and I think we'd also like to get some social, uh, social media impact metrics as well somehow. But uh, I think all of us are, are doing our, our full-time jobs as well. And so uh, you know, we, we've been kind of collecting it as we, as we can. Sure. Yeah. Well, let me make a request on behalf of the City Council. I, I think it would be wonderful if you share that with us as well. And I'm also wondering, did, did Prava pay for a police detail? Because whenever I was there, there were three to four policemen at the gate. Did, were, was that a, a private arrangement with Prava? Uh, no, they were, they were there from the city. From the city? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Well, Councilor Razak, was it? Thank you, Mr. Yeah, go ahead. Chairman. Yep. Um, first of all, thank you. Prava was fun, exciting, and it was really nice to see something happening in the city of Brockton. Um, when it was being advertised, I heard, oh, who's going to go to Main Street? Well, it, the numbers showed that a lot of people did want to hang out on Main Street and have fun and have uh, good entertainment, so thank you. The numbers that you gave us in the beginning, how do those, have you compared those to other towns, cities that have had something similar to to Prava and where do we, like how does Brockton look with our numbers? I uh, haven't done a comparison yet. Okay. Uh, and I, I would say each one of these venues is slightly different. Uh, you know, some will run just one, one, uh, one day per week on the weekend uh, because they have a larger Saturday market. Um, so it, it's difficult to, uh, I think, in some cases you're comparing apples to oranges. Uh, and, but I, I think from Brockton's standpoint, if you, if you aggregate the numbers that we have and you put those over a full, uh, a full spectrum of operation hours for a restaurant or something like that, I, th I think you can really start to build something and uh, improve a case, which is really what we want to do here. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, Mr. You, Chairman. Councilor. Councilor Monahan? Yes, uh, <coughs> thank you. Um, yeah, well, kind of it's interesting about I'm any sorry. profit or any what have you funding, but I think the main thing was <coughs> the success of it was showing that people want to come downtown. You can come down and enjoy yourself. It's going to be safe, and that's the main thing we got out of that because obviously businesses saw those people downtown in that downtown area. We had, like you said, zero issues down there. <coughs> and it, I, I don't know. I think I added to the profit quite a bit. I was down there uh, numerous <laughs> every week. And it was really a great time, and people were happy to be there. It was nice to see some smiling faces, and, and a lot of different people coming down there and enjoying themselves. So I think it really was a great thing. 
the future businesses that want to come down to see that. So I think that's the main thing we wanted to get, and you did get out of it. Yes. And I think down the road you're going to see that. I mean, whatever you do in the future, but I think that's really was a big success this year, and it's, uh, I think for downtown it's going to be uh, in the future. It's going to be good for us in the future. So thank you. Thank you for putting on the program. Thanks, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Ellie, then Councilor Sullivan. I just wanted to, to add to the positive comments. Um, I, I think that, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of good came out of it. Uh, I, again, it is really important to note that there were no public safety issues there. Um, and I think with the, the number of people that you saw every week, <coughs> only in the first year, you know, when, when people become, you know, people have become familiar with it, they're aware of what it is now, I think those numbers are going to go, you know, pretty far up the next. Uh, and I saw a lot of, a lot of, you know, it being shared and people saying they were there on Facebook. Um, do, you, do you think that, you know, in the future uh, there will be more, you know, marketing? Like instead of, you know, an event like sponsored posts and, uh, you know, adding from Facebook to, to Twitter or Instagram or anything like that? Yeah, I, I think there's uh, tremendous room for improvement uh, over what we did this year. And I, I think uh, it's helpful that um, many, many of the board members were, were highly involved in this year, so they understand how it operated and what needs to change uh, to make it better this coming year. And marketing is definitely one of those. Uh, I, I think we, we also need to, do, need to do a better job of uh, making it feel welcome to everybody. That was a message we were putting out there, but I know just from having conversations with folks that not everybody felt like it was for them or they weren't sure if they could come in. Um, that, that was certainly not the case. We wanted everybody to come in, but that's, that's something that uh, I know the group is going to work on this year, too. Did you drink Poland Springs or Perrier? I, I had water before I attended. <laughs> no, my, ver my, my version of a pregame counselor. Okay. Both I of drink them were waters. I just want you to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, none of the bubbly for me. Yeah, okay. I don't know if I can handle it. Councilor Sullivan. Uh, George, thanks for being here tonight. And uh, I mean, kudos to everybody. I, I know Bob Rivers, the CEO of Eastern Bank, he was sending emails out on almost a daily basis, and the fundraising was fantastic. Um, the 501c3, I mean, you said it's in the process right now. Um, my question would be um, relative to last summer, wh who had the insurance policy in place? And then, and from my days of law school when I used to work at the uh, a couple bars in Boston, the Purple Shamrock, any slip and falls, any potential lawsuits? Because when there's booze involved, I mean, things happen. Was there, was there anything like that relative to a potential lawsuit? Uh, there was nothing uh, relative to a potential lawsuit, okay, but we are, we are insured to the hilt. Good. Uh, Shoveltown had their own insurance, yep. Shoveltown Brewery. Uh, B21 uh, pulled a general liability policy for it, for the site. Since okay. they had the stadium, much of what was happening there would fall into that. And NeighborWorks also had insurance on the site. Okay, so, so it was more than enough. More than enough. Okay, excellent. Yes. Thank yes. you again. Happy you holidays. Will. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Council Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes. It's good to see you. And of course, congratulations we got to this event this year. It was amazing. Um, you claim that Pova did not charge the vendors uh, to do anything coming up next year. Do you plan on doing the same thing again, or would there be some kind of charge? That, that's something that I think the, the board's going to iron out. Uh, and if they, if they did, it would probably be a nominal fee. But uh, now the, I think the organization realized that the, there's got to be some sustainability built into it um, at the same financial st sustainability. But at the same time, uh, it's important for something like this to remain accessible to the community and artists and entrepreneurs. And so uh, I think that that's uh, very much in mind and, and will we'll weigh in heavily uh, when they ultimately ma make their decision on how to, how to structure next year's event. Yeah, um, another question. I know um, Councillor Susan Nicastro, um spoke about that, that earlier. We, we got to the amount of um, cops that I saw there and you claimed that it was like free of charge. What the police? the police there? Yeah. Uh, that that was the city's contribution in kind. The the police detail. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. I, I, and, and I don't want to say that was free of charge. They were on duty. Correct. You know what I'm saying <laughs> people, yeah. the public's going to think they, you know what I mean? But they were they were on duty, and they were the bicycle. If I'm not mistaken, they were the bicycle cops yeah, that were there most of the motorcycle. time. Motorcycle. Yeah. I mean, excuse me. Yeah. Same thing, pretty much. But yeah, I just want to keep it good. Who else had 
Councilor Darncourt, you, you, you're all set? Okay. Motion yeah. recommend favorably. Second. Second. Motion was made and the second to recommend favorably. Back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back Thank to the full city council. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, you Council. Council. Happy Christmas. holiday. Same to you. Councilor Sullivan. Mr. President, I just want to remind everybody we have an ordinance committee meeting tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, the 18th. Uh, our own school, but it'll be in the cafeteria. Uh, DA Tim Cruz and uh, his first assistant, uh, former Judge Rick Savignano, will both be in attendance. Uh, I've requested that they speak uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Um, and we should be, um, the five of us relative to the committee, we should be able to move. Uh, I think this will be probably the last meeting. We've had eight meetings this year dealing strictly with medical marijuana. So this is the last agenda item. I suspect that it will get referred. Um, and then we'll be able to, again, we have the moratorium for another month, right, till the end of January. Rob May and the planning board will have to meet, but it is tomorrow night next door, six o'clock in the cafeteria. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Azak. Thank you. Yep. Um, I'd like to announce that we have an accounts committee meeting this Wednesday, December 19th at 4 p.m. at City Hall at the basement level, and this will be the last meeting of this year for the accounts committee. I would also like to invite everybody at home to join Brockton High School's music department this um, for a holiday concert Tuesday, December 18th and Wednesday, December 19th at 7 p.m. Uh, the concert features BHS Concert Band, Repertory Chorus, Advanced Concert Band, Concert Choir Chorus, and Band. And it's um, located at the BHS Auditorium. Tickets are only $3, but you're, you'll be um, attending a state-of-the-art uh, advanced, I don't know what else I could say, so much talent in one room. I wish everybody could be there with us. It's, we really, um, we don't realize how much talent's in the city with our youth until you attend some of these um, concerts. So hope to see everybody there. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Lally. I just wanted to uh, say again <coughs> that Wednesday, December 19th at 6.30 p.m. at the Ashfield Middle School, uh, I'm holding a ward meeting. Uh, the school department's uh, chief budget officer, Aldo Petronio, will be there to talk about the budget. Uh, he will, of course, have a focus on the schools um, uh, and answer some questions, things like that. Um, so I hope I hope everyone uh, can make it. Thank you. And just before uh, just before we do depart, uh, just a reminder that we'll be back here as full city council on Thursday, December the twenty seventh. So just so you keep that in your calendar, and then uh, return question mark will be on a FinCom in the first, of but I don't think so. It'll probably be the third one in. Uh, the third uh, Monday in, in January, we'll just move right ahead to the January 14th. So I just want to take time to wish all of you a very happy, healthy holiday season. Um, I hope everybody enjoys themselves and, uh, you know, stay safe is what I always say to everybody because it's been, uh, it's been a challenging year, but uh, next year is going to be much brighter. So uh, I might be dancing by Christmas Day, but I doubt <laughs> that. But um, in any case, um, if there's nothing else to come before, the committee this evening and I want to just uh, wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. <laughs>